Hello? Oh, I need to move the, I see. Move the keyboard down. It was above the, uh, the video transition thing. So it was, uh, you were seeing the keyboard Im immediately, but the transition was happening. Was okay. So anyway, fix now. What did Frosty Tool say? A triumph was seen. question you know I, something I could have done uh, while we were on a break is start the build but I'll do that now uh, how are we gonna test this I guess we can load a video should be fine one of the things I did uh, do off stream was make it so that when I click log in with YouTube, it opens up this little uh, interstitial thing in a pop up so that it doesn't immediately take to take it take me to my Google login and show all my different Google logins on stream. So then I can just move this off off camera. I can log in and click right Google account right brand uh, yeah and it looks like this right okay bad gateway all oh, right the services are restarting is like trying to do a refresh of data and that failed um do I yeah yeah Go back to episodes. Do I have an episode that I can upload? Have I uploaded 65 yet? Probably not if I, if I don't have a video description. Uh, let's, if I do have the, I, I have uh, gone through the process. I just need to generate the description. Um, one of the things I do need to change about the prompting is that if we look here at 65, or what I want to do is I want to have the, I want to expand kind of the standard blurb at the end of the description to have more links. Uh, in fact, let me update my list of things to do here. Oh, right, right, right. So I was going to do, I want to, I do want to have a thing where I have a way in the app to have templates for the video titles and descriptions, and then like plug that into ChatGPT to be like, okay, do this thing, but then also use this template, or do this thing and then plug that the result into the template, something like that. Um, maybe that can be like, I mean, I'm kind of doing that now where I like have it generate JSON, and it's like, here's a title, here's a description, here's the chapters but actually have like different elements of the description and then use a template to combine the elements. Could be a thing. Um, okay, so I'm not gonna do anything on that right now, but the idea is gonna be, okay, so we're gonna see, what did it generate? Uh, Rust APIs plus React Admin, Glowing Telegram Project, Chilled Sunday Coding, Sunday Morning Coding Episode 65, which is what it is. Uh, join us for another relaxing. Okay. Um, so I'll click use the message. It it does try to include timestamps. Also, I would like to be able to resize this description. But, uh, I decided I don't really care for the, the keywords and timestamp stuff. Um, I'm going to paste this here for now. Let's take a look. Join, join me. I think it's 
probably better. Uh, for another relaxing Sunday morning coding session. In this episode, we're working on the blank tell them. We're always working on the blank. Uh, like this is just. Let's see. I'm working on the blank tell I'm proud of you folks that need Rust APS with React Admin. Uh, I'll be tackling tasks like implementing YouTube Upload API. So this is from uh, April. <laughs> Handling API secrets securely, refining our upload error handling processes. Grab your coffee and let's dive into some code together. Remember to like and subscribe for more coding streams and tutorials. Uh, to support this channel. I think it's a little bit more honest at this point. All right, so this is the process. I think I've shown bits of this. Like, I think the thing I haven't really shown is like the DaVinci Resolve stuff, but uh, it's fine. Now, here's a question. Is this, is this less than 100 characters? I think so. Yeah, good, I do have validation there now. Uh, cool. All right, go back. So what we can do is test. Okay, so the build completed. Um, we can test uploading this to YouTube. Um, we should see two tasks get queued in the process and then complete. How can this go wrong in a bad way? Think about that before I click the button. Like we can't accidentally upload to the wrong channel or anything like that. We're only logged into one thing. Um, I, it still is just the video there. Yeah, I think it's pretty safe to do. It's either gonna work or it's not, or it's gonna like upload the video and fail to add to the playlist or something like that, which I, I wonder, like this video 64 is in the playlist. Let's go check the playlist really quick. Make sure everything is right. It does get um, messed up sometimes. Yeah, one through 30 of many. Uh, let's see, 61, 62, 63, 64. Okay, so at least that's right. Uh, upload to YouTube. Yep. Now it says like, I have this like notify subscribers thing and that only happens when I actually publish the video, not just when it gets uploaded. That's a separate thing and it failed. Refresh. What do you mean? Like the little dot there in this message, that makes sense. It has follow on tasks. Why is there a check mark? Uh, let's look at components. Or I could look at the network response. That's also, yeah, it's probably easier. So I could build get tasks and response. Uh, they are in no particular order. What is today, 28th? Uh, Three is, oh, I don't show IDs here anymore. So it says it's complete. So it thinks that it successfully uploaded to YouTube. Something came out as, as failed though. I wonder what's up with that. If I go here. Oh, it doesn't keep my place, huh? Sixty five was what I just uploaded. Let's go back to content. We have like refresh. No, I don't have a sixty five. So something went wrong. Let's look at Docker. Um, API. I 
Okay, status failed. Could not send message. Um, error. Brainless said something. Unauthenticated, invalid credentials. Request has invalid authentication credentials. Expected OWA to access token login cookie. Okay. This was YouTube upload task. Oh, the other thing is that I did not actually hook up the new playlist task endpoint to be like an endpoint. Uh, so that wouldn't work anyway. But why are we unauthenticated? Okay. Uh, what did Brainless say? Brainless said, I was implementing last night a feature. We need a unique sequence number sent on request. I'm using Redis to have a key uh, with an increment. This needs to loop around to one when it reaches uh, six nines. Thus, if that value happens, I just delete the key and increment again. Now I am thinking the rest instance won't be shared amongst environments like dev and QA and stage, but the number needs to be unique. Um, do you mean literally like six nines or just, do you mean like max and like when it reaches, how does increment work? have dedicated integer type string stored the key is in, it's interpreted as a base 10 64 bit signed integer how does overflow work i mean this is relevant for me too because i'm using increments to generate a counter to generate unique keys for tasks So what happens when we get to um, 63 bits? The issue I'm seeing is that as dev QA stage will all hit the same endpoint, they need non-colliding numbers. Ah. Oh. I'm confused. You said the Redis instance won't be shared amongst your environments. Did you mean it will be shared? Like it's one data store, so the keys should, you need to avoid the keys colliding. see so like your concern is like each environment is going to have its own database with its own counter so they would all by default start at one but the thing that they call is shared between those environments what is the issue with uh okay so the but the, the the number needs to be unique across all the environments, but they're not sharing state for where the number comes from. Um, interesting. Let's see. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So first answer is to have separate <laughs> things for each environment. But uh. You know, it's, it's an external party, so you can't really necessarily get them to do things that would actually let you do the right thing, unfortunately. Um, can you, for each environment, have 
a configuration value that's like an offset. So that you can have a different offset for each thing. So that the counter would be, it would still start at one, but you would just add a fixed value. And then each environment would, when it increments, you could be like, when you get to a certain fixed value, you change it back to zero. Um, I don't know. Uh, so like all the dev uses one. I don't know. Build a wrapper service around Amex's service that um, takes a request that disambiguates which environment it's from and then uniqueifies the ID before passing it on. So all the services call your, your internal wrapper around the external API. Might be an approach. Um, okay. So one thing I definitely need to do is I need to define this endpoint. Uh, and so that it can be called that thinking, thinking emote. All right. Let's see. Transcript, Twitch, YouTube. All right. That's not what I called it. It's not what I called it. Maybe I'll rename it. It seems like an okay name. Let me take a closer look. You know what's good? The outliner. Slightly faster to scroll through. Especially if these things were all like collapsed. There we go. Have you a playlist handler? What did it want to add to playlist? Yeah, that's fine. We'll call it that. Uh, they also have a period of time after which the counter resets, but I'm fully ignoring that. I could add a TTL, but if the keys work, I'd rather just letting it loop. Sure. What is it like here? Accessing first element with this. Try first. So that will hook up the endpoint so it can actually be called. I think the, uh, let me trigger go. I think the other issue may be, I did authenticate, uh, but the service did restart. I'm not, shouldn't matter. Did I ch change something in the API so that it didn't get the um, auth token? Start task handler, access token. Okay, I'm confused. What are we doing with the access token here? Nothing. Why is this here? Um. Maybe just to validate that the token
token can be retrieved before we make it to the uh to the the part where the task does the work that could be true can i go for a food run all right hmm i guess i'll leave it and it's not important um it's the upload video handler here it should be using the access token it is it's passing it to the authorization header here We should be doing something similar in the add playlist task handler. Use the access token. Except we we haven't we have a little function that we call here that wraps that. Um, and does the same call. Okay. I don't know. I don't know why. Okay, so the build is done. Let's let's just try this again. I'm going to log in with YouTube. Bring this over here. Save VODs in the channel. Continue. Logs in with YouTube. You can now close this window. Um, let me. Like, it's not stored in the front end, it's being stored in Redis, the, like the access token and stuff. So it shouldn't matter. Uh, the only thing that should matter is that, like, it through um which it appeared to do let me go back to, to docker and we can see if we see the request really glad that i got the um redact library Client ID there is not secret. The secret is redacted. Um, that is a code that you could potentially use. Uh, but too late now, I've already used it. Um, so like we're storing this code in Redis. Yeah, should be fine. Upload to YouTube. Upload. What happens? Okay. Request. Uh, upload URL. So we we did the initial request to YouTube to be like, here's the metadata. It gave us back like a thing to continue the upload. Um, and so that should be happening. It doesn't take that long. I mean, it's not instant, but it doesn't take that long. Um, like if we go back to YouTube now and I refresh, there should be like a placeholder where it's processing. There it is. 65 pending. There's all the details. It will, hopefully, if this works, add the playlist to this or add the video to the playlist if you want to think about it the other way. Um, so what this saves me doing is like filling out video language, title description language, recording date, license type, uh, these check boxes, um, and the category. It fills all that in. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a way to set the end screen on the videos. So I still have to come manually do that, but I have to come in here to like toggle visibility anyway, at least for now. I may at some point make it so that I can set up the video scheduling and stuff from inside of Glowing Telegram. Um, also do like thumbnailing stuff from there, maybe. Think about doing like AI generated thumbnails um, like what I would want to do is like have a thumbnail for the series probably, and then have variations 
to like overlay that or something. Maybe. So this will be a minute. But what we should see over here in the, there we go. It's processing. More tasks will start when this one finishes. I'm, I'm not, I didn't change this to like give a lot of detail about like what, how many things are left or whatever, because that would be like there. It's like, it's, it's nested tasks, right? It's like this task has a next task and inside of that is the next one. I could probably count that. I just didn't bother for this. Uh, so we just see there's a next one. That's what that little dot there is supposed to indicate. But so far, so good. At least um, I have not broken the uh, uploading portion, which is good. We should see a, a notification as well, kind of behind my little avatar um, when things change, because we have that set up now where it's like a WebSocket push to the front end. Um, what else? Let me, uh, so this is issue number 137. Let me uh, get on a branch. Uh, assuming this all works, I'll commit this and get that pull request up and we'll, we'll get that merged and all that stuff. Um, use chain tasks to mark episodes as published after uploads to YouTube. I think that's kind of the next logical thing um, that will save me like two clicks <laughs> per video, which is a small thing, but hey, we're already here. We got this figured out. Um, that should be relatively straightforward. about how I want to do that. I think that actually could be really simple. Um, so because I'm running all of this locally, um, one thing I've not had to figure out is kind of like any kind of authentication um, to the server, like to the backend or between the API endpoints. It's all just like all available. Uh, and that makes that that's just a thing I've not had to deal with. Uh, that I would have to deal with if I had this like accessible from the internet. Um, and at some point I will have to deal with that, I suppose, probably. Eventually I'll probably wanna like host this somewhere else. Um, but it's fine for now. So uh, point being is that like we have a set of handlers to update things. So like if I go into episode update, I can pass an episode uh, update episode request, which is like um, you can give it a partial record to tell it which uh, elements to update. So I, I should be able to just make a call to that API. Passing is published. Um, what's really nice about the way the task API is set up is that the task worker, the endpoint that it calls does not have to be especially designed or being called by the task API. Really the only consideration is that the task API is going to expect the response to have an object response that it can then look at a key, the data key uh, for. So the question is, does our update endpoint for the episode record have a response that it can do that with? And I think the answer is yes, because we return just the JSON object of the episode detail view. And so we should be able to say that the key is like ID or something, something that'll be present there. And so in our, um, 
two task request here where we're building the task uh, tree. At least right now, it, well, it's a task chain. You could imagine this becoming a task tree where we could like parallelize um, even like a directed cyclic graph potentially if we want to carry this on. I really like this idea though of like what you do is you submit the work to the tasking engine and you tell it like a state machine to process rather than, um, so one of the things I was looking at the other day was, do I really want to keep on like maintaining the system myself, this tasking thing, or could I use something off the shelf? You know, it's the classic, uh, build versus buy all I'm not going to buy anything, but, um, like I could use an AWS service. Like, uh, I have used step functions a lot in the past. The issue with that is if I go down that path, it will make it very, um, I will very much want to like move more stuff into AWS and I don't really want to deal with that right now. Um, I could use something like Apache Airflow or there were a bunch of other things uh, like Temporal and some other stuff that came up. Um, Luigi was a kind of a simpler Python based thing. Um, a bunch of different things that are out there. And the issue is they're more complicated than I need. They are, you know, conceptually simple to set up and like start doing a thing with, but they don't really do, they don't integrate into my stuff. They don't, um, they are not fully suited to this specific purpose. Like a thing that I would, you know, that I made for this is look and we're, we're processing. How do I, how do I point here? There you go. Processing. Uh, it failed. All right. Well, that's, that's progress. Uh, point being is that I think there are things we could do. And after reviewing everything, at least for the requirements I have now and that I can foresee, I don't think it's worthwhile to like, um, use an existing thing. Like one of the things I looked at was, um, and in retrospect might've been good, would have been celery. Um, but then. I'm not going to necessarily rewrite everything into Python. I could have done that. I could have, there's also a, like a rust celery, like, so celery is like a, uh, a task queuing thing, but also supports the idea of chaining on tasks and there. So that's implemented in Python. There is a rust celery thing. It's very similar. It's like separate implementation that supports Redis as a backend. But it doesn't seem to support chaining tasks. Um, like you can give it like a thing to do on success, but you can't tell it do this task. And when this task is done, continue with this as part of like a setup thing. Um, I guess you could probably have the task queue up another task like internally, and that would be that would accomplish what I'm doing here as well. Um, sort of. I like. I, I kind of really like this though, because like these endpoints are designed around the idea of being used by the tasking system, but they are not solely like, um, we're not like pulling in like, um, structs that define specific shapes from the tasking system to use in these APIs. There's still a separation between the tasks and the API endpoints they call. And that means I can do things like, oh, hey, next task should actually be, um, you know, a task template that's going to call our CRUD API to update the, the episode. What I've just realized now, though, this is going to get a little bit more complicated. What we need to do is if there's a playlist ID, we need to do this. Um, and if there's not, then we need to directly call the episode published update thing. So I think what I'll probably do is I'm going to move this up and we'll do some conditional logic up, up at the top of this and then yeah, things, but, uh, we'll come back to that after I figure out what's gone wrong with, uh, oops, there we go. Yeah. Uh, playlist thingy. 
Okay, so we have a bunch of like path. Uh, so this is like all of the event uh, web socket stuff going on here. So what happened was before that maybe. Uh, task status complete. So this was the first task. New status complete. Status complete, new status processing. Okay, YouTube playlist add task. Start start a processing request. Status fail. Okay, so we don't have anything here about the um I guess I don't have any logging in that area. Let me look at the task worker and see. Uh, so this is all from the 24th. Is I need to add some uh, some logging, and then I think we'll just directly call the API and see how it works. I can also do a little bit of digging in Redis to find the video ID, and um, and basically that the the task itself, and then we can construct an API call to this handler. Uh, oh, I see. So what we should be doing here is if this fails, we should do some tracing. Uh, and that's fine for now. Not just return the 400 spots, but also trace so that we have something in the log indicating exactly where things fell down. We did here as well, but we didn't see this message. So it's likely that we failed to get the video ID from body dot previous task data that first. So previous task data might have been empty. I think uh, let's go look at Redis. Redis. All right, what? OK, it's going to open over here. Good. All right, so do we know the task number that failed? Uh, 56, task item 56. Oh, hey look, we can see the payload actually right here. Uh, so previous task data was an empty array, right? So what I would have expected Task 55 was the preceding task, which makes sense, given there weren't a lot of tasks going on. So there should be a task data 55. Task data 55 is a list. Uh, and there is an element there. So why? was the payload for this also this is weird right so it sent event task status changed new status failed previous status queued id 56 Received uh, you feel sad you had to kill seven subscriptions. Yeah, they they did increase the price of subs. Subbing to 10 plus channels adds up quickly. Yeah, yeah. What uh what I ended up doing for the channels that I'm sub two is I just converted them all to uh, six month subs for the uh, 
um, for the uh, locking in the price and you know the discount right so why is this this is the same task right 56 why did we get a message saying that it was complete after it failed think that might not get them the extra earnings they want. Price elasticity might be high on this kind of service. Yeah. Um, is that the direction price elasticity, elasticity works? My, my economics is rusty. It's more elastic if people are... Um... Just like choose to, the, the, I don't know. Yeah, I think like it's inelastic. I don't know. I, I I can see it both ways, right? It's inelastic. It's not elastic. If people are like, oh, the price increased, well, I'm just not gonna buy. I'm gonna, not gonna spend the money. And it's elastic if like they can change the price and people will still pay. Lower elasticity implies less direct impact to change. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think that metaphor can work both ways. <laughs> it feels like in this moment, but I'm sure if I popped open a textbook or a Wikipedia page, um, it would make sense again. So why was the previous task data empty? So there's something wrong. Somewhere. Uh, we don't need that file up there anymore. Task worker main. So when we build the payload. Okay, so when we build the payload, we say previous task ID. Did we set previous task ID? <laughs> There's a question. Uh, so when we spawn the new task, previous task ID, are we saving that? Are we retrieving that? If a goods price elasticity is zero, it is perfectly inelastic. Well, that part makes sense. And then your parenthetical is no amount of price change produces a change in demand. Yeah. No amount of price change produces a change in demand. Right. This is like the, uh, the, the, Perfectly spherical cow, uh, <laughs> kind of mathematical thinking there, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so pricing would be, so it would be elastic. Because changing the price changes the demand. Increasing the price lowers the demand. Thus elastic. All right. Detour and economics aside. Um, build task payload. If we have a previous task ID, we get the task data from the previous task ID. And then we stuff that data I am confused why are we calling JSON survey JSON value array on data like data is already a vec shouldn't this just be like JSON no because maybe You hate 
He hated economics, but mainly due to my professor. She was a well-known econ econ uh, economist. There we go. And thought that everyone in class needed to be one. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That... That seems... Very, very narrowly... <laughs> hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure she did not literally think that everyone needed to literally be in the pro profession of economics because that seems to undermine the idea of how economics works, but I'm sure she had a, uh, a, a, a belief in the value of the knowledge imbued within <laughs> the field of economics. All right, so this seems fine. Uh, and shouldn't really affect what's going on here, I think. Um, here and here and here. Publish task status. Wait, so does that mean that in the log there is a... Previous task ID is null. Aha! And all of these. So there should be a previous task ID and there isn't one. Um, oof. That is an unfortunate circumstance. Uh, I bet very frustrating to be accused of something like that that you hadn't done. Where are we serializing and storing um, data into Redis? Like, here is this. Should be something. Oh, if I search for HM set, there it is. Right. So this is missing uh, the command, the arguments to save the uh, previous task ID. That's what's going on. Um, definitely not that. Um. Unwrap or default zero is definitely not what I want to do. How do I? Hmm. It's an option U64. Something I'll never forget, especially as I was already, uh, I was always upset about the amount of cheating going around, getting uh, accused and failed. Yeah, sounds upsetting. You watched uh, nine out of nine streams last month for a total of eighteen hours. Were there only nine streams last month? It's lacking. I've been slacking. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, because I guess, yeah, especially with the, um, uh, what, I, I missed basically a week, right? And then I'm only doing three streams a week now, so that, I guess that adds up. So what am I gonna do about this? Like, I want to... What do I want? I want to maybe just not pass previous task ID. Uh, 
Um, that is a long line of code to interact with Redis. <laughs> The Redis uh, crate might have like a simpler way of doing this. Right, this is kind of the low level way. There are high level commands. Work in progress and many are still missing. do I want to do like none of these other things are optional right well next task is no oh at this point oh I see I see so What what what's going on here is I'm I'm dealing with that up above, <laughs> up above, uh, for these other things for next task. So we just do the same thing. Let's we'll say one that let uh, previous task ID either uh, if it's none it'll be null. Um, or we make it a string, right? So it's JSON encoding. Uh, this, which I mean, for that matter, could I just do JSON? Let's do the same thing, or effectively the same thing. String, right? Because previous task ID is either a number or it's null. Start starting JSON value uh, from JSON literal. Variables or expressions can be inter uh, interpolated in the JSON literal. Any type interpolated into an array element, yada, yada, yada. Um, so I think that can work. gets this a string okay what did brainless say uh oh 1 30 p.m already should have defrosted my lunch but i just went into the kitchen and it's cold and i am lazy ah <laughs> oh lunch is still a little ways away okay so that should fix the other issue Now, I guess what we'll do is I'm gonna go back and we'll fix up the, this video. Like that task has failed out. I don't have a way in the UI yet to um, uh, like retry things to say, okay, go try this again. Uh, if it fails out, it fails out. Um, but this is all in place. So I can I can manually add the playlist and add the in screen. <laughs> Rip stream. Internet. Ooh. Press 
continue again? Hey, okay, I'm back. Just in time for an ad. Nah, nah, that was me. Uh, I think... Well, it was really weird. I could not... Um, re... Connect to the stream. But what happened was, was that the NVEC encoder... Uh, gave up the ghost. I don't know. It couldn't uh, deal with all the things going on. Anyway, uh, I'm going to take a break here, though, because it's about time anyway. And I just started ads, so I'll be back. 